Hello and welcome to this edition of Mission Nonprofit. I'm your host, Robert Cam. On Mission Nonprofit, we feature a local nonprofit organization from Thurston County, and this month we have the Boys and Girls Club of Thurston County. And with me to talk about the Boys and Girls Club are Shelica Trevino, Mara Harris, and Terry Little Garden High. Yes. Hi, welcome. Thanks Hello. for coming. Hi. Thank you for having us. We yeah. appreciate it. And so the Boys and Girls Club is a great way for parents to uh, have after school care. Mm -hmm. But not only that, but you also do summer camps. Is that right? We do offer summer camps. Mm -hmm. So we have four locations, uh, Rochester, Tumwater, Lacey, and Olympia. And so each of those clubs has a summer program, uh, two different options. So we're flexible with family schedules and uh, the fees associated um, can be scholarship depending on family income. So. Well, the fee is very nominal, it as is. I understand. It's it $25 is. for a membership and Correct. that's for the whole year. Correct. And then the kids can go and they can do the after school program. They can do the summer camps. Uh, you, are, you have extended hours in the summer too, but, and that's a fee. But uh, with $25 for the year, then uh, parents out there have, have child care. And a lot of these parents need this uh, affordable child care. They do. And the kids need a place to be after school. And they need adult mentors who care and are willing to spend time with them when you know their family is working and supporting them. So mm -hmm. homework help, recreational activities, uh, you name it, that's what we provide. But uh, I would say our secret sauce is the supportive relationships that we offer to families. And that's with the counselors. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Mara, you're one of the counselors, is that right? Yes. You're, yeah, and, and you're actually this, uh, last year, or actually 2015, this year, you're the Youth of the Year, yes. the winner of the Youth of the Year. And so you work at, at Rochester. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about your job. So my job entails me running front desk while also either running an art project or games room at the same time. And so it's really neat because art and games room will swap. So one hour is art, the next is games room. And it's really neat just to see like the different kids you get in for the different activities you do or the different programs. I run a few programs. I run Minute to Win It. So it's like a bunch of little Minute to Win It games that the kids have seemed to really enjoy and really get involved with. And then I also run Smart Girls, which is for, I have it for kit girls, eight through 11, and we kind of talk about the, what it's like to be a girl, from, you know, just your emotional state to even your physical state, just how it, how you develop friendships and yourself in general. And so, um, uh, Terry, you are a parent of a child that is yes. in the Boys and Girls Club, and which uh, branch does your child go to? Lacey. Lacey. So um, is he or she, does she like the, the program? Oh my goodness. Like, <laughs> I would say love. He'll get up to go to the Boys and Girls Club, but school, that's another thing. <laughs> <laughs> so he's in there in the summer camps right yes, now? Yes, he's okay. there now. How old is he? He's eight. Eight, yeah. And his name is Terrence. Okay, great. So he really loves that summer camp. Yes, he does. And that's he family. Yeah. That's not just camp, that's family for him. So he makes a lot of friends. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, he loves it. And I feel good about it because I know he's safe there. I mm -hmm. don't worry when he's at the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah, and then they do fun things in the summertime, right? Don't they go on field trips and yeah. stuff? Where, where, has he been on some field trips this summer? Yes, swimming, to the movies, stuff like that. They do different things. Uh -huh. Yeah, and he loves it all. Yeah. Even if he's not going, he loves to just stay there with the staff and hang out outside and play games inside. He enjoys it. He loves it. Yeah. And so he does the after school during the year, too? Yes. Yeah. And, and Shelica, they, you can, they can take a bus, right, from mm -hmm. whatever school they're at, and that bus will take them to the Boys and Girls Club. That's correct. So we have partnerships with each of the school districts, and without those partnerships, we wouldn't be able to provide the transportation to the club. And for most parents, that's key because they're working and mm -hmm. leaving at 2.30, 3 o'clock to pick up a child and transport them isn't an option. So uh, shout out to all of the school districts in Thurston County. They're very, very supportive. Uh, but there are limited spaces. And so, um, you know, we have situations where families might be on a waiting list. Um, so it's important to get in in August and register for the following school year. Mm -hmm. So that's coming up here. 
Yeah, so parents, if, if, you, if you're not, if your child is, is not in the Boys and Girls Club now and you desperately need a place for them to be after school and you're working until 5 and school's out at 2.30, then look at the Boys and Girls Club's website, which is the, of Thurston County. It's bgctc.org. I got that right. Correct. Right? bgctc.org. And you can find out more about that and how to get registered uh, to have your child go to the Boys and Girls Club. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, it's really not, it, it doesn't cost the Boys and Girls Club $25 for a year for <laughs> a student. So he was telling me that it's seven, the cost is really like $750 per student. Right. And, that's and so that's all taken care of with uh, businesses and individual donations yes. and other things like that. Yeah, so sometimes people think, you know, oh, well, it's a, it might be a state funded program or maybe federally funded, but um, in truth, we're not. We're community funded. And so uh, about 98% of our uh, budget comes from local donors, um, whether it be corporate or individual. And uh, then about 2% comes from grants. And so um, it takes a whole lot of people to support the over two, I would say about 2,500 students, um, club members that we serve each year. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not cliche. It's true that it takes a village to, to raise up a group of kids. And that's what Thurston County has proven to do for us. Yeah. Do, can you name some of the big contributors? Uh, who's maybe your major funders? Sure. Uh, we have the Stars Foundation, who mm -hmm. does a match for us. Uh, we've had a number of community members. I'd, I'd, I'd hate to call one out and not mention others. Sure. Uh, well, we can tell everybody they can see that on, on your website. Yes, you have a, and we a link do, there. We do recognize those folks at our Foundation for the Future Breakfast that's okay. held in May. And so um, we, they're all special to us. So, uh -huh. yes. I see that. And then individuals as well. Absolutely. They can contribute. Mm -hmm. and, and you have a, a, an event that's the foundation for the future breakfast where you encourage people to, to increase their giving. or Correct. Yeah. We, there is an ask and we do provide an opportunity for them to hear from one of our club members, um, whether it be Mara or uh, Jessica from last year. Um, they get the opportunity to share their story and their experience with the club. and. Uh, then we have between 700 and 900 guests who attend that event. So Mara, you spoke not only at the Foundation for the Future Breakfast, but also at the statewide, um, what was that called? Uh, the Youth of the Year event? Yes. So, so I didn't speak at the Foundation for the Future Breakfast this past year, but I have spoken previously. Oh, okay. Because when I was younger, I got Youth of the Year book four. Oh, so okay. um, I've had the opportunity to speak at the Foundation for the Future Breakfast, which can be a scare, but then when you get up there, you know you're doing it for a good mm -hmm. cause, so you just kind of forget about your fear in the moment, and that's like the same thing at the State Youth of the Year event. I got up there, and I had a speech I had prepared that I had gone, worked so hard on through the local to the state, and I said my speech, and then came back down and listened to all the other kids tell their story as well. So it's a neat opportunity and speaking is always, it's good for kids to know. Yeah, it's good for adults to know too. <laughs> and, yeah. and it's, that's a very neat you know, um, experience. It's mm -hmm. probably gonna pay off. You know, Public speaking is important. You can get good jobs that way. Uh, maybe you'll be hosting a TV show one day. <laughs> Um, but speaking of TV shows, we have a video uh, all about you and being the youth of the year, and we're going to roll that into this episode of Mission Nonprofit. So uh, here it is, and we'll be right back with more about the Boys and Girls Club of Thurston County. So Mara was just always very outgoing, um, always willing to help others. I just remember the first thing about her is, what can I do to help? Uh, is there, do you need something as staff? Do you need me to help with the younger kids? Can I run an art project? No way. Hi, Jordan. I'm Christine Hoffman, and I first met Mara when I was the new branch director for the Rochester Club for Boys and Girls Clubs of Thurston County. And I started in about 2008, and that's when she started here at the Rochester Club. If you need a piece of paper, please sit, stand somewhere quietly, and raise your hand, and I will get you one. To me, just
just sort of that willingness to serve others really stood out. Um, from being just a helper to the staff members to even going as far as trying to serve the community. So at the Rochester Food Bank that's right next door, she organized car washes so we could donate to them. She uh, helped when we started our Rochester Club garden. She asked if we could donate some of the food back to the food bank so that we could help them out. Um, she organized things so that the teen center could have improvements and she was just really always willing to get to know other kids no matter who they were or what their background was. Well living here in Rochester there's a lot of poverty stricken families and so I see these kids who maybe don't have the best families or the best support systems at home and so I have, I've been able to help be that stable figure in a child's life. Uh, my name is Gwen Moody. I'm the president of the board of directors for Roof Community Services. Um, and so when we're searching for volunteers here at Roof, we want someone who has compassion and someone who has the commitment to help and serve their community not just because they need to fill out a slip for school or, or have you know, community service hours. We, I mean, we have those too. But we look at people who are committed to their community and helping others, and Mara fits that bill like very few do. She just has an amazing heart and a willingness to help others. And it lifts her up, and it's made her, her confidence shine, and she's just a great young lady. I'm just, it's an honor to know her and to call her my friend. Volunteering and getting out in the community and helping out at school, you know, it gives me something to occupy my time so I'm not trying to dwell on all the bad things. It gives me a reason to keep going forward and it gives me a reason to be happy. <laughs> was really determined to win state, but it wasn't for me. It was for the Boys and Girls Clubs of Thurston County. I wanted to show everyone what kids in Thurston County have to offer. I know having that place, that one place where people care will pick you up when you're down and provide that safe environment. And I was upset because I, didn't, I felt like I, I let people down but I thought about it and I got to that point. I've gotten to that point twice. And just because I didn't go further than state doesn't mean my life, my journey is over. It's, it was just opening up those doors for me to continue down my journey. The next three years of middle school, I was tormented and harassed by my peers. By eighth grade, even my so-called best friends had become a part of that bullying. I began shutting down my great suffering. I didn't smile, and I felt worthless. The year where she was bullied was one of the hardest years for her, even at the club. Um, she was always cheerful and happy, and then there was just times that we noticed that she just wasn't her normal self. There's always that one friend in the group that most of them pick on, and everyone's too scared to say, hey, yo, that's not good. And so I was that one friend I got picked on. I had to leave my friend's house at three o'clock in the morning once. So when a kid comes to us and maybe they're not acting the same way they normally would, uh, for instance, you know, they come in and we just notice something's a little off or maybe they're struggling with their grades or something. Um, we just know that there's probably another reason. And because we have a great mentorship program, because we have programs like Smart Girls and we have healthy habits and we just have, like I said, caring staff that really genuinely want to see these kids grow and thrive. We're able to sense that and um, in a situation with Mara, that was exactly what clued us off. Uh, when her grades started slipping a little bit, when she wasn't at club as much, we just knew there was something wrong and I think we have this wonderful ability to mentor kids in such a way that we're able to just take up, pick up those social cues, pick up those little things that maybe other people aren't seeing because the kids are able to put on a happy front or a fake front elsewhere. Okay, can you come back on your back swing the screen just for a second? So concentrate on this, so straight down. My name is Dale Reeves. I'm activities coordinator for Black Hills High School, also leadership teacher and girls and boys golf coach. I met, first met Mara Harris through my intro to leadership class three years ago. 
She's been an instrumental part of our Perception Day, which immediately shows how to break down bullying and harassment at our school. She's helped create agendas and facilitate two Perception Days a year for the last three years. Uh, it's been a, re a proactive program here at Black Hills High School, and students just engage totally, uh, become who they are, become authentic. You are your own person. You set your goals, you push yourself to do harder, and that's what you have to remember. You have to remember that no one can define you. I believe the biggest growth that I've seen in Mara is introspective, to be able to look within and continue to build on her strengths as well as her weaknesses. I see nothing but uh, presidential uh, you know, opportunities in front of her because she is not somebody who lets anything get in her way. Giving up is the easy way out. And you don't want the easy way out. You want the more, the road you can learn from. I want to inspire people. I want someone to look at me and say, because of you, I didn't give up. My name is Mara Harris, and thanks to the Boys and Girls Club of Thurston County, I didn't give up. Hello, welcome back to Mission Nonprofit. If you're just joining us, our guest this month is the Boys and Girls Club of Thurston County. And I'm here with Shelica Trevino, Mara Harris, and Terry Little Garden High, right? Did yes, I get it right? Yes. <laughs> so um, we just saw a video about you and how you are the uh, youth of the year. And so when did you get started at the Boys and Girls Club? You started being like a, a student or a, you know, yeah. a, count, a camp uh, camper. Yeah, so I was, I started going into my fifth grade year. So the summer before my fifth grade year, I attended the summer or the Tum Water Boys and Girls Club for a few weeks. And then once school started, I wasn't going. And then come going into sixth grade, we found the Boys and Girls Club in Rochester. And that's when my club experience for me really started. It was where I learned that the most unexpected things come from the most amazing people. Hmm. The staff have always been so encouraging. I had a really rough patch going through sixth through eighth grade because that's middle school down in Rochester. So I had a, I had a rough time going through there and I ended up actually transferring schools. So then for high school, I went to Black Hills High School and but throughout that whole time the boys and girls club the staff even the teens kids had always been there for me and i kind of drifted away for a year with going to a different school so my sophomore year i kind of drifted away and then towards the end i ended up coming back and that's when it all started again is when i started going down a dark path and seeing the kids and how much joy they have and seeing the staff and how much joy they have, it really, it brought me out of that dark place. And I was able to start my life basically. And that's when I really truly discovered that I want to continue working with the Boys and Girls Club for the rest of my life. Nice. And I want to eventually, you know, work for the Boys and Girls Club of America with either marketing or helping speak and different things like that and then this last year I was well about October November is when the whole youth of the year thing really started for me and that's when I was told I was going to be the youth of the year for the Rochester branch and that in January they were going to have the they were going to announce who 
locally, so for, throughout the county, who was going to be the Youth of the Year. And so that was a really long and hard process. I had to write two essays, my personal brand, which I had to name three things that I would consider my personal brand. And then I also had to write my speech. <laughs> that was the other one. And I had done this a little bit before, back when I was in seventh grade. I had been chosen to be Youth of the Year, and then I was chosen for Thurston County as well. But it wasn't nearly as intense as it is this now. So doing my speech was kind of tough, but we got the chance to go to Ellensburg, and we went to a retreat with a few other counties. And so all the competitors for each county was there, or the runner, runners up for the ones that's already chosen. And it was a really neat experience because you got to connect with other people and you got to figure out kind of how you want to present yourself. You kind of had an idea before, but afterwards you were like, okay, I found this out about myself. Because you got feedback on your speech, you got feedback on your essay. It was just a really neat, opportunity and I believe that really helped and it also helped with my interview skills mm -hmm. because yeah. we went through that because you have to go through that you have a panel of I believe it was five judges and they interviewed you after they read your personal brand essay and all that and that is kind of where I believe my strongest point is is with my interview and my speaking and coming to the local event, which was a f two or three weeks later, I had to wait for to know who had won, and it was kind of nail biting. <laughs> <laughs> but um, come the local event, and they announced, and I hadn't really been expecting it because I knew I had very strong competitors with me. Not necessarily competitors, I guess they they became my friends, mm -hmm. and any one of us could have won and I would have been just as happy. Mm -hmm. But then after that, you know, they announced me, and so then my state process started. <laughs> I had to write two more essays because I had three of them. I had my club experience, my personal brand, and my vision for America's youth. And then I also had to completely memorize my speech and get it under three minutes. So, so. when you, um, you were a camper and you went to work as a, as a counselor, right? Yes. And, and how long ago was that? A year and a half ago. Okay. I started working my, so last year, February. So yeah, a year and a half ago is when I had been volunteering and then the lady who was in charge was like, okay, we really want you to work. And so the process started and I got my first job. Neat, and you want to stay there. So that's great. But um, when uh, you're, you're now graduated from high school. Yes. So, um, and now you have a job. Mm -hmm. But uh, can people work at the Boys and Girls Club before they graduate? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it does take a very special candidate to okay. be hired as a minor. Uh, you know, they have to have gone through our junior staff program. They have to have volunteered a number of hours before we'll consider them for an interview. Uh, so it would be unlikely that um, a minor who walked in and had never interacted with us um, would necessarily be hired. Uh, Mara is a very special club member, and um, we have a number of youth of the year who have become staff members. Um, they have a different perspective about Boys and Girls Club. Um, they really, it resonates with them. They understand what they're charged to do while they're working with those kids. And so uh, the passion that you expect from a staff member is they've been raised in it, so. Well, um, I'm proud to say that my children go to the Boys and Girls Club and there's all kinds of other, um, you know, enriching programs that they have. And you spoke about the, uh, 
um, what was the the one for women or, or smart the, girls? Smart girls. Mm -hmm. And then you have one for boys, Passport to Manhood. We do. But then you do all those field trips, and, and they've been invited to go to, like, Seahawks games right. and stuff for free and everything. Yes. You get that, you get things donated to the club. We do. And then the, the um, campers get to They do. Know, the kids do get that. a lot of enriching experiences at the club. So uh, one of my mentors um, has spoken a number of times about um, us being a, a guidance-based program disguised as a recreational program and I think that really sums it up mm -hmm. you know to the kids they see a lot of games and um, things to interact with but uh, really we're teaching the kids lessons and whether that be through our power hour homework program or smart girls where they learn a lesson about conflict resolution uh, we're wrapping it very fun and and you know the kids are engaged but um, they're learning life lessons afterwards and they end up like Mara, and uh, you couldn't ask for a better uh, product than you know the kids that we're raising. So, uh, Terry, your son Terrence, what are some of the fun things that he's got to do with the other programs that they've had? Wow. Well, I'll say one of the most memorable things that he got to do was take a ride with a police officer Ooh. during Christmas time. <laughs> and he thought he was just going to the Boys and Girls Club to, you know, like a regular day. And then the next thing you know, he's in the police officer's car, pressing the buttons, and then he's going on a shopping spree. So <laughs> my baby was overjoyed. He, I mean, he still talks about it till today. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the most memorable times. And I mean, just the fact that he's a part of um, the dance group and the acro group. He started out as the only boy in the group, and he was proud of that. I mean, he loves it, and I'm happy. He has a lot of confidence going to the Boys and Girls Club because the, uh, the members there, they they just make sure he's okay and uh -huh. that, you know, they give him like five minutes a day sometimes to talk to him and just ask him what's on his mind, how is he feeling, you know, what's going on and, you know, I appreciate that. I really, really do because sometimes it's things that young boys don't want to tell moms and, you know, you always know what's going on with your child. And then their homework. Help. That's right. They have they have homework right. help with the power right. hour. They, they help get with prizes homework. for exactly. that and stuff like that. It's neat when when something just comes up like this right. police ride. Right. That sounds cool. Yeah, my my son was ecstatic when he got to go to a Seahawks game, and, yeah. and Dad was excited. And he didn't have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of neat things happen when I come pick up the kids. Sometimes they a bunch of board games have been donated, mm -hmm. and they're handing out board games to the parents. You know, right. it's neat because. Yeah. That's kind of the go-to place for some uh, of these these people that want to give to children. They go to the Boys and Girls Club first. That's true, and yeah. we're, we're very blessed in that way in Thurston County to be beneficiaries of um, a lot of support, and then we can then support families who um, can appreciate those things. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to say the website once again, mm -hmm. which is bgctc.org. And I want you to go there, and there's a giant link on the top right corner that says Give Now or Donate mm -hmm. Now. And, and it's a great way to donate your, your money to help parents that, that um, you know, that need help. We appreciate <laughs> so, that. And, and then, uh, you know, you can get involved and go to that website if you do have a child that is not in the Boys and Girls Club and you hear about us talking about this and you mm -hmm. think it sounds good for your child, just go to their website and, and check it out. There's uh, a branch in Olympia, there's one in Lacey, there's one in Rochester, and one in Tumwater. So uh, we have to wrap it up for this uh, episode of Mission Nonprofit. Thank you guys for being here. Thank, Thank you, you, Robert, Thank for having you. us. All right, we'll Appreciate see you it. next month. If you know of a local nonprofit that's making a difference in our community, give us a call at 956-3100, extension 103, or send an email to rkam at tctv.net.